Coming up this hour, increase in speeding tickets. Why law enforcement says this pandemic is prompting bad behavior. And Easter looking a lot different than normal. How churches celebrated the, hol the Easter holiday in the era of COVID-19. Plus, Jared, I'm tracking much colder temperatures and a freeze warning that has been issued and in effect until later this morning. Live from Utah's first TV station, Good Morning Utah at 6 starts now. Good morning, Utah. It is 6 right now on your Monday morning. I'm Jared Jotanini. We've got Brian Carlson anchoring from home. We'll get to him in a moment, but we begin this morning with the deadly COVID-19 coronavirus. According to Johns Hopkins University, over 1.8 million people have the virus. More than 438,000 people have recovered, while 114,000 have died. Nationwide, there are more than 557,000 confirmed cases, 41,000 people have recovered from the virus, and more than 22,000 people have died. Statewide, more than 2,300 people have tested positive for the virus, 44,000 people have tested overall for the virus, 195 people are in the hospital, and 18 people have died. Utah Highway Patrol says it's seeing an uptick in people speeding on roadways. Over the weekend, there were two deadly crashes in Salt Lake County. Both drivers died after crashing their vehicles, driving just too fast. Utah Highway Patrol says in the past weeks, it's pulled multiple drivers over for going 100 miles per hour or more. I think people have a mentality that we're not going to stop them just because of COVID-19. We're trying to take precautions, but public safety is our first priority. All right, you heard it there. UHP believes the excess in speeding is because there's less traffic on the roadway. Utah's Utahns caught on camera enjoying time outside, but not abiding by social distancing guidelines. On Saturday, hundreds were seen around the state capitol in downtown Salt Lake City enjoying the cherry blossoms, all fine and dandy, but they are ignoring directives put into place by Governor Gary Herbert, Salt Lake County Mayor Jenny Wilson, and Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall. According to experts there, take a look at your screen. Utah has not yet reached its peak in number of cases. Remember, if you're going to be out in public, keep a distance of six feet or more from others. Wear a mask to not prevent yourself from getting sick, but to keep yourself from spreading illnesses to others and avoid group activities. The Utah Division of Emergency Management making changes to its emergency alert system. The division tweeted out over the weekend that the alert for people living in the St. George and Vernal areas has been narrowed to not include residential areas. This comes after various people reported receiving the alert when not entering the state. Last week, the governor implemented a travel directive in response to tracking the spread of COVID-19. Because of COVID-19 and social distancing, most churches held their Easter celebrations online yesterday. Calvary Church in Salt Lake City has one, was one of those churches that was scheduled to originally hold their non-denominational Easter service. But due to the pandemic, organizers, much like other churches, streamed their services online. Happy Resurrection Day! Gotta love that, gotta love that. Not in a Bravino Hall, but in your living room, just as you heard. When can you enjoy an Easter service in your underwear? Here you are. Praise God, it's only one way. You can see me, but I can't see you. Uh, I'd still wear pants, but to each his own. Calvary, like other churches, is also taking its prayer services online. They're holding a Monday through Friday online prayer session that's open to everyone. Multiple medical teams from Intermountain Healthcare are prepared to deploy to the Big Apple. They'll provide help to New York Presbyterian Hospital and Northwell Health. The voluntary COVID-19 response teams are made up of 50 caregivers, including respiratory therapists, nurse practitioners, and physician. They'll serve a max of two weeks. These teams are going because of the crisis in New York and because of the incredible shortage of caregivers, they will be there to help and be on the front line to take care of patients in New York City. Both NYC hospitals say they plan to deploy teams to Utah when we face our own surge, which health officials anticipate that'll happen around mid-May. Time now for your weather on the fours. 
Happy Monday. I'm meteorologist Erica Martina. Live look outside Lake Mountain looking gorgeous right now. We are seeing fewer clouds as the day progresses, so we like that. But temperatures are definitely going to be below normal for this time of the year. We have a lot of cold air sliding into place, guys, and that's going to be the story at least through tomorrow. We'll get a little bit warmer, but I'll show you in just one moment. Freeze warning right now in effect for Moab, Delta, Grand Junction until 10 a.m. I'm telling you, we do have a lot of cold air settling into place, a trough that's digging on down, jet stream that's digging on down as well, allowing all that cold air to settle right over our forecast region. So be mindful of that freeze warning. Here's a look at the current wind speeds. That's telling us where this wind is coming from, where the air is coming from. It's coming out of the north, and that's why we do have colder air. So again, conditions will be unseasonably cold, at least for the next couple of days. And in just one moment, I'll show you the extended outlook and just how cold it's going to get tonight. Jared, back to you. All right, Erica, not spring temperatures quite yet. The time now 605. Let's check that morning commute. This is I 15 at 1000 North in Salt Lake City. We've been tracking this crash all morning. Crews have the southbound lane blocked off for an accident. It's forcing people on the on ramp. We have a crew on the way to the scene. Once we have more information, we'll share it with you on air and online at ABC4.com. Now, as the country battles COVID 19, New York Maybe seeing its death curve flattening. This is another fight against the Trump administration. Preparedness is unfolding in our nation's capital. ABC's Alex Prisha has the story. This morning on the front lines, the newest crop of medical workers are ready for battle. It wasn't an easy decision for everybody, but for me, it was the right thing to do. So. Rebecca Noonan, now a doctor, chose to graduate from medical school one month early. She will join the fight in New York City, where the hospitalization rate is dropping, but the crisis is far from over. New York State's coronavirus death rate has been in the high 700s for the last several days. That's the so-called flattening of the curve. It has been flattening, but flattening at a terribly high level. Across the country, other hot zones are emerging. In Pennsylvania, the governor now predicting a surge in cases this week. Cases in Texas already surging. The governor there considering opening some businesses next week despite caution from public health officials. Several governors have been critical of the federal response. And a coronavirus task force health expert admits government inaction may have cost American lives. If you had a process that was ongoing and you started mitigation earlier, you could have saved lives. Obviously, no one is going to deny that. But what goes into those kinds of decisions is, is complicated. The New York Times reports in a February 21st coronavirus task force meeting attended by Fauci and Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar, it was decided they would soon need to move towards aggressive social distancing. By this point, China had at least 75,000 cases and northern Italy was closing public spaces. But the president did not announce those measures until more than three weeks later. During that time, the number of known U.S. coronavirus cases surging from 15 to over 4,000. The White House responding, saying President Trump took bold action to protect Americans and unleash the full power of the federal government to curb the spread of the virus. And overnight, the president continuing to defend his response, calling that New York Times report fake news. He also retweeted a message critical of Dr. Fauci that ended with the words time to hashtag fire Fauci. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. All right, new this morning, University of Utah Biomedical Researchers received a federal grant to study mucus's role in spreading COVID-19 coronavirus to potentially opening the door to treating the virus. According to the Deseret News, the goal of the study is to determine if mucus is more likely to spread the virus. The project is expected to be completed within a year. Right now, one of the biggest questions a lot of people have on their mind regarding coronavirus is, when am I supposed to get my government stimulus check? It was one of the top trending searches on Google over the weekend. I know it's a question I'm wondering too. We've got Brian Carlson joining us live from home this morning with the latest. Brian, what do we know about these checks? Well, Jerry, you know, you're warning about it. You know, I'm one of these people concerned as well. Some people may have this money in their bank accounts already. According to ABC News, the first Americans who are getting their stimulus checks will have it through direct deposit. Now, this money is being sent out from the U.S. Treasury Department to help offset the economic downturn caused by COVID-19. Here are some of the first people who will get those stimulus checks. The Treasury Department says the first payments will go to Americans who received their 2018 and their 2019 tax returns already through direct deposit. So if that's you, right, you should get it no later than Wednesday. That's when you should expect it. 
Right now, there's no timeline on paper checks. If that's the route you go, those may take a little longer to distribute. Now, let's say you didn't file your 2019 taxes yet. I know there's a number of people out there who didn't. You're encouraged to go to irs.gov just to enter your information so you can get your economic stimulus checks faster with direct deposit. Now, I found some helpful information online. It's actually on our website to be able to answer some of those basic questions we have, like how much money am I going to get? How does the process work? Go online and look for that story on our website, abc4.com. You know, and Jared, we were talking earlier this morning about whether we've got any bank accounts yet. I just checked mine again. It's not there yet. So, so kind of waiting patiently like the rest of us are. Right, and I got my, uh, direct, my, my, my tax return in a check. So I'll probably, like a lot of people, be on oh, no. that second wave of people too. Uh, it's easy, easier to save when it's in a check and you're looking at it. But all good advice. Thanks so much, Brian. That's true. Now, if you're experiencing symptoms of COVID-19, here are some simple steps you can follow. The state of Utah has developed a website you can access at coronavirus.utah.gov. Once you're there, you'll see a line at the bottom of the page with a phone number for information about the virus. You see that number there at the top of your screen. If you're worried you have COVID-19, here's the three main symptoms, cough, fever, and shortness of breath. You can also get a test the same day if you feel like you absolutely need one. New this morning, wildfire dangers are growing in the state of Utah. This map from the U.S. Forest Service shows the high wildfire danger in our state. As you can see there, areas in the higher risk area are in red and orange, which is the Wasatch Front and the St. George area. Police in Salt Lake have arrested a man for allegedly stabbing someone. Police say 18-year-old Carson Torrey was trespassing in an apartment complex on Saturday and went inside a home with multiple people inside. The victim told police he was stabbed by Tory. Tory told police he went there to get money from the victim. Tory is now in jail for aggravated robbery. We now know the identity of the man who died in a crash on Saturday. Police say 19 year old Jesus Torres was driving his car when he crashed into a pole on Redwood Road in Salt Lake City. Police say as Torres switched lanes, he lost control, then left the roadway and crashed. All right, 612 right now on Good Morning Utah. Coming up next, tornadoes raging across the south over the weekend. How families are cleaning up today after the storms struck. And California winemakers putting community before crisis. How they are using their product to help healthcare workers.
Time now for your weather on the fours. Erica Martin, we were having some mic issues, but the good news is now we're not. So let's take a look at our 500 millibar chart. We have colder air moving into place, a trough that's digging on down, allowing a lot of cold air to pretty much stay here for the next couple of days. Temperatures are going to be unseasonably cold for today and for tomorrow, so be mindful of that. Be sure you have those coats handy. Current wind speeds, really not that important because we're only seeing six mile per hour wind speeds for Monument Valley, five for Milford, three for Delta, but it's really the direction that they're coming out of. Northerly winds meets colder air, and that's going to be the story for the next couple of days. So a live look outside. Downtown Salt Lake City looks really nice right now. Those clouds aren't clearing, but it is cold. 35 degrees in Salt Lake City. Price 22 for you. Green River at 34. Lake Powell, St. George in the 40s. And Moab right now under a freeze warning until 10 a.m., 32 degrees, so at that freezing mark, Salt Lake City, we have below normal temperatures for today at lunchtime and only topping out at 46 degrees at 3 p.m. Breezy conditions, those winds out of the north will kick up at lunchtime. Fewer clouds for St. George, 59 degrees and breezy, 65 at 3 p.m. Future cast, let's get this into motion here. And we can see this, uh, the northerly influence there of the wind. Some light snow showers remaining, but for the most part, anytime we get a lot of that colder air moving in from the north, it does dry out the atmosphere, and that's why we are seeing a clearing of those clouds earlier this morning for the Wasatch Front and for St. George. So we like this area of high pressure. It's going to keep lots of sunshine in the forecast for Tuesday and Wednesday, but those temperatures are definitely something to be mindful of. 67 is your expected high temperature for today. 68 for tomorrow with more sunshine. I added a few clouds on Wednesday, though we will trend in the 70s for the next couple of days. St. George, Wasatch Front, totally different story. Upper 40s for today. The overnight lows below the freezing mark. And then we're going to stay in the 50s. We look, we'll look at the high 50s on Wednesday, low 50s on Thursday. We climb into the upper 50s and 60s on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But in the meantime, be mindful of these colder temperatures. Jared, back to you. All right, Erica, bracing for the cold. Thank you. Here's a live look at the morning commute. We're back out that crash at I-15 at 1000 North in Salt Lake City. Crews have southbound lanes blocked off for an accident. Now we have a crew on the way at the scene. We heard reports someone was injured, but that has not been confirmed. Once we get more information, we will share it with you both on air and online at ABC4.com. Now in a storm alert, strong winds pounded the deep south on Sunday, killing at least six people in South Mississippi and damaging up to 300 homes and other buildings in northern Louisiana. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. Overnight, severe storms wreaking havoc across the south. Multiple tornadoes touched down. Got a funnel cloud right here in front of me. Leaving nearly half a million people without power and forcing several states to declare emergencies. Everything just ripped off and everything was gone. It was, it was gone. In Mississippi, several people were killed, including a sheriff's deputy and his wife. It was a major tragedy. The ferocity of the storm is evident in the aftermath. Trees, trucks, even tractor trailers were toppled by the wind. Residents were forced to ignore coronavirus protocols and huddled together at a shelter to stay safe. In neighboring Alabama, police shutting down an entire town late Sunday. Going door to door after storms tore a trail of heavy damage across neighborhoods. Wow. Earlier in the day, victims were wheeled out on stretchers when a tornado caused this building to buckle. Lord Jesus, come on, move! And in Louisiana... Look at the... Oh, my God! Look at my... Look at the house, y'all! Oh, my God, look! The path of destruction clear after a twister tore through the city of Monroe. This is a terrible, terrible situation. Some houses seemingly untouched, but just feet away, houses completely gutted, roofs torn off, leaving nothing but scaffolding and rubble. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. All right, uncertain times. Now, what started off as a small thank you for healthcare workers in Southern California turned into a massive effort by winemakers. Yummy.
It started with a request for one case of wine to thank frontline medical workers at UCLA Medical Center. But word got out and turned into 550 cases that were donated to medical facilities along the California coast. And my son drew on every bottle of wine, uh, little hearts, and, and put a couple of nice notes in there. I said, I'll try. And I, I go, let me call Mike. I called Mike, and he said, I think I can do it. Within three days, we had over 500 cases donated. Now, I'm no sommelier, but California arguably has the best wine. Each bottle was personally handled and tagged with a message of thanks from the wine community. They are also inviting the recipients to visit when the pandemic is over. Connecticut and Connecticut Police Department handed out personal protective gear in Easter baskets on Sunday. I would just say, um, you know, those who are 55 and older, we're concerned about the most. So if they can stay home and stay safe, that's what we want them to do. But if they must go out, we want them to wear the PPE that the police department is supplying to them today. Very important. The baskets went to the elderly. They contained gloves, masks, sweets, and a note. Officers say donations made distributing the baskets possible. Police say they wanted to get out the supplies before health experts predicted the pandemic's peak. Remember, if you see any inspiring acts of community over crisis, reach out to us. We'd love to share your story and positive things Utahns are doing. Just send us an email or message us on Facebook. 621 right now, coming up next on Good Morning Utah. Easter around the world looking very different this year. Why some churches defied orders against gatherings. And the financial impact of COVID-19 coming more clear. Why one group says a third of Americans didn't make their rent payment for April.